Hi, uh, welcome back to Monster Art School for part two. So this is where we're going to get a little bit more serious, and so that's why I brought this big lug with me, Jacob, to uh, draw along with me. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little Wait, bit. Hold on, a lot of people about, who are here weren't yeah? necessarily at the two o'clock oh, one. Yes. So your name and who you oh, are. Oh, sorry. And, and why right. Like I have to introduce myself. Um, okay. So my name is Steve Ellis. I'm an illustrator and a comic book artist. And let's see, I I illustrated. Let's see, Magic Gathering cards, Dungeons and Dragons games, uh, uh, cards for World of Warcraft, and some video game stuff. And I've also done a lot of comic books. Like I drew Iron Man for a while, and let me see, Captain America a little bit, and uh, Spider Woman, and Green Lantern and stuff. And then I also create my own projects like, um, let's see, The Only Living Boy, which is a graphic novel series. Uh, the Only Living Girl, which I'm trying to pick up now. The Only Living Girl. These are the first two books. This one just came out today. Um, and Monsterwood, which is a series I do with a guy named Jason Rosen. Um, usually I work with David Gallagher on The Only Living Boy and The Only Living Girl. And, uh, I don't know. High Moon? And, oh, yeah, and I did High Moon, which was a werewolf western, uh, which was uh, a little bit more on the adult side of things. So, um, earlier today, we talked about how, uh, I'll take this off now, we talked about how everything was based, everything we draw is built out of basic shapes. And we ended up turning those basic shapes into a really simple dragon. I'm assuming that if you're here, you were either in the earlier class, or you've had a basic idea of what I mean when I say basic shapes. But I'll go over this really quickly so we can zoom through. So the basic shapes that we're dealing with, for the most part, are cones, like this, where it's cut off at the bottom, or a regular cone like that, where it's, you know, it comes to a point. Cylinders, or tubes, okay? Cubes, and spheres. And the main way we create these things into tubes, spheres, cylinders, and cubes, as opposed to squares and, you know, circles and triangles. The main way we do that is by changing the perspective. So just to draw a cone really quickly, if I'm drawing a triangle like this, if I want to make it a cone, I need to look either down at it or up at it to give the impression that it's in three dimensions. Because otherwise, if it's just two-dimensional, we can't look up and down at it. So as we look down at an object, just like if we're looking at this cup from the side, it's this shape. As we look at it like that, we start to see the top right, as a curve. This becomes an ellipse. As we come forward, that ellipse becomes a circle. Whoa, and it drips liquid out of it. <laughs> but but what that what that means is that as we get closer, and uh, that was my inking glass for a while. So so the way to, to create three dimensions on an object is instead of having a straight line on the top and bottom, we're going to curve it and create an ellipse. So we create ellipse on one side, and the other side has to just curve away from us. So again, we create a lip an ellipse. And then we connect it to kind of half an ellipse, becomes a tube. If we create a triangle, but we curve the bottom of the triangle, like so, triangle curved down, we're now looking down at a cone. A triangle with an ellipse at the bottom, like so, we're now looking up. At the cone and in order to give the impression of moving around the object I like to think that you're drawing like you're drawing ants around an object so these are little ants crawling across the surface and so if everything is moving around the object if you want to go check and see if people are asking questions you want your rendering your shadows your details to move 
around the object like so. Always thinking about something coming from behind and then coming forward. So coming from behind, coming around and forward. So with the cone, one way to make, to, to kind of build the impression of this being three-dimensional is you can draw those ants going like that. To make this one feel three-dimensional, you can draw the ants going around like that. Hey, you left. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Helpful teenager. Um, but so the idea is that you create, this gives the impression of looking down at the object. This gives the impression of looking up at the object. Okay. Now, those are the basic building blocks of anything you want to draw. So what we want to do is you want to look around the world and see how many things that you know are based on those building blocks. Um, you know, a book is clearly a box. A, uh, you know, a uh, you know, a book. Is a box with a curved side. That was lovely. Um, <laughs> do you want to ask any questions, really? Or are you just going to be quiet sitting there? Yeah, okay. You could talk. Um, anyway, so <laughs> what you want to think about is every object that you create is based on these simple shapes, even when it comes to people and animals. Um, are we are we still on? You're on. Okay. Uh, just hearing our voices doubling up. So knowing all this, we're gonna now move on to the next step. So this was the drawing that we did earlier today. And now I'm gonna draw something a little bit more elaborate. So the drawing of the day was a dragon. And we're gonna choose tomorrow's drawing from whatever people send in. But what I like to start off with when I'm drawing anything is keeping myself loose and kind of loosely imagining what I want to see the dragon doing. So in this case, I'm going to loosely imagine a head and a neck, and you could do this too, Jacob, a head and neck, and I'll just kind of imagine what's the position I want this dragon in. So I'm just going to throw some lines down and keep it really, really loose and light. And you may even have trouble seeing what I'm doing here. But that's the point. The point is that this stuff is just here to kind of give me the impression of a simple, a simple drawing, or a simple, more accurately, a simple gesture. And the gesture is basically the angles and the movements that a figure goes through. So when I'm drawing this, I'm thinking like if this is a hand, we'll call this a hand. Let's say there's fingers on the hand, and then I have the forearm here. And then I have the back of the arm here. And then maybe I have the other arm coming up here. And I'm just going to basically scribble in stuff until I have an idea of what I want. You know, I think I kind of want to turn the head up. So I'll move the head this way. Okay. I'll just kind of give that dragon a little bit of a chest. So what I start to think about is what are the basic shapes we're working with and so for the head up here, I'm going to start with kind of an orb with maybe a sphere with maybe a cone coming off of it, like so. And then the neck is a tube of cylinders. There you go. You got it. And as it goes away from me, it comes around like this. And then as it comes towards me, I'm bringing the lines around like this. So I'll bring it around. And I'm going to create the body here for like the top of the body. And then I'll get the middle of the body. I'll get the hips. I'm probably not going to get the whole body of the dragon in. I'll try and get the, the beginning parts, the feet, the front feet, and the head. So... Basically, I scribble around a lot until I figure out where everything's supposed to be. So if I have the neck going like this, and I have the head here, maybe his mouth is going to be open. I'll do that. I'll give him a nice wide open mouth. And I'll start to think about what kind of 
head stuff he's got on him going on over here, or maybe some horns and nostrils and everything. But basically, I'm keeping it all really loose. I'm just kind of imagining in my head three-dimensional dragon, and then I'm going to take it from there as I go. So, you know, and I'm not completely keeping myself tied to anything. That's why my lines are really loose and light. If I draw too hard, it makes it really hard to change my mind later on. So I like to change my mind as I go. So like in this case, I'm changing my mind quite a bit because this dragon has this one paw up like this, and this other leg is going to go off. So we're going to have this dragon kind of end. Oh, I have to get some wings in there, like so. So I'm basically marking in the drawing, drawing very loosely. Now, there you go. Tell me when you feel like you're ready, Jacob. Just go on. Okay. So what I want to remember is I was drawing things. Well, every figure, every creature, everything out in the world is cut in half, meaning we're bisected. So if there's an eyeball on one side of the face, there's an eyeball on the other side of the face. I'm going to pull in a little closer. Okay. So that, which means more of your face, but also a low, um, like half your face and more of the drawing. Okay, great. It's a little light to be seen on the screen right now. Cold coffee. Yeah. So what I want to look for is, I'm going to try and think, imagine in my head where the center of this creature is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, start to think about boxing out the creature. So I'm going to make this the front of his nose or his snout. I'm going to kind of box that in. And then I'm going to kind of decide his brow is there. So this is a little piece called the keystone that anatomy people or anatomy drawing people call it the keystone. It's between the sockets of the eyes. So I'm going to draw a keystone. It's kind of a uh, triangle with the top cut off upside down. And then I'm going to put in eye sockets. Now, since I'm thinking the dragons are like lizards and lizards are like dinosaurs, I'm going to give him big eye sockets, but he's probably going to have little eyes. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping track of those eye sockets. And then down here at the points of this square, I'm going to put two more circles for nostrils. And then I'm going to keep in mind that everything is split down the middle, and we give him a little bit of a kind of a beak. Not quite a beak, but I want it to come down to the center there. And then we're going to build a flat plane for the top of the head. Is that a question? Uh, no, new person joining. Okay. And I'm going to think about things like cheekbones. Do dragons have cheekbones? I don't know. But we're going to draw cheekbones. We're going to put, and then here we're going to throw in the lower jaw. So I'm going to base the lower jaw of this sphere of the main part of the head. And I'm going to imagine that somewhere in here we go from the sphere to the under part of the mouth like this. And I'm going to kind of create a shape like that for the under part of the mouth. So I have this nice arc in here. And then I'm going to get, oh, I'm going off the paper. I'm going to get, create cones for horns. And I'm going to put ears right at the back of this arc of the jaw. So he'll have ears right about here. So the ears should be, if you were on a human, the ears would be between the eyebrow and the nose. And on this guy, I'm going to do the same thing. Say right around here, that's where I should have the ear. So the other ear on this side, we can't see because it's hiding behind the side of the head. So if we want something to look like it's away from us, right, we draw in front of it. So like this horn, we're going to draw in front of it. We want something to look like it's in front of the other object. So this horn is in front of the sphere here. It's going to come like that. That way, this horn looks like it's pointing in this direction. That horn looks like it's pointing in that direction. Okay? So whenever you think about this, if something is in front of something else, it overlaps it.
like so. If something is behind something else, even if it's bigger, it gets overlapped. So these two lines and shapes are very important to creating the sense of depth. So when I'm drawing, say, this object here, this, this uh, nose object, I want it to sit in front of the orb that is the center mass of the head. Okay, so I want this cone to be moving away from us, so it's behind the head, like that. I want this cone to be in front of the head, on this side of the head, so it's going to be in front like this, so it's going to block it, right? So the ear is going to be behind, so I'm going to pull it, put it behind this, the jaw. Now, I want to bring that neck that we had here, right up so if we imagine this is the back of his neck here it's going to connect right into the center of his head right there and it's going to come around like so now this is starting to look really big and cartoony and we're going to get some detail in here pretty soon um and that's going to be where we start making it more detailed i mean more uh more kind of realistic uh so the next couple of steps are going to be frequently what i'll do as i'm working is i'll come up with this basic thing and then I'll start to go okay well what does a like a alligator eye look like or a an alligator nostril look like and I try and figure that out so frequently I'll go and I'll look up books on alligators and reptiles and stuff like that or other creatures um in this case I'm going to wing it but if you want to get stuff that looks really sweet it's often is good to get reference on this stuff so I'm going to go back to my nose here and I'm actually going to separate the front part of the nose as a rounded object and then I'm going to make the center part the bridge of the nose to a more of a almost a cube so we've got a rounded object a cube and another big rounded object and that cube hooks right up into that keystone and the eye sockets are on either side of that keystone so you get this very rigid Kind of structure here. Now, as we go, can you see that, Mila? Yeah. Okay, great. That's my wife, Mila. So oh, you know, we we just had like four or five more people join. Oh, hi everyone. So so maybe do a quick like reintroduction and catch up. Well, okay. Basically, I've been doing basic shapes, so circles, squares, or orbs, <laughs> um, cones, triangles to basically build my dragon. Um, and then I'm going to be putting in details as I go. And I'm starting off with pencil, doing it loosely so that I can very quickly kind of put stuff in. And, and, and it doesn't matter if I throw a lot of lines down because I can later on I can erase them and get rid of them as long as I keep it light and loose. Um, is that enough of a recap? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I'm going to draw around the neck, create a segment separating his underbelly from his the top so you imagine up here he's got his big armor that protects him up here and then underneath is his soft underbelly or his mithril uh where his mithril uh what do you call it plates, Arrow, plates aren't quite as uh close together i'm thinking about um smog from lord of the rings so i'm creating an arc here and basically that's just like kind of a c shape to an S shape. So you can see the S around like this. And that S will take me from the far side of that neck over his shoulder, down into his elbow, and up into his arm here. And so since since dragons are very slithery, I like to keep things, you know, smooth and slithery and slidey like S's. So I tend to use a lot of them when I'm drawing a dragon. So now I'm going to get back to, just like I drew a circle for the head, I draw a circle for the upper torso of the body. So what I want to do is I want to separate that into two sections as well, just like I did here. So we have a center. And that way we have the center of the neck as well. 
So the neck isn't so much a tube as an object that's kind of built like this. In here, we're going to have scales coming down the middle. And around here, we're going to have scales going that way. Um, so now let's get back to the skull. I mean, the head right now. We'll get in the eye. So I'm going to put the eye in. And like I said, I want the eye to be small in a really big socket. So I'm going to kind of give it, this is how it looks more, if I had a really big eyes, you'd be like, oh, that looks really cartoony. But little tiny eyes somehow makes it look more naturalistic. So if I give it little tiny eyes, and the way eyes are done is eyes are an orb with a flap of skin wrapped over and another flap of skin under. And the under one folds under the over one. So you end up with like this kind of a shape. So when I'm drawing the eyes, I want to consider that the eye lid on top hangs over the orb and the lid on the bottom curves under the orb. Okay? So say that's based basically on human beings. And then I'm going to consider the fact that the inside in here, right here is the inside of the socket. So I'm going to shade in there, and I'm going to draw some serious, like, wrinkles and stuff in here to kind of make it feel more dragony. And then, basically, the way to, to think about when I'm drawing a dragon for, like, a big, scary dragon monster, what I like to do is I like to think about what how many angles I can put on it. So if I have a brow shape here and a brow shape there, I'm going to throw some angled kind of... Right now the eye looks kind of sleepy, so I'm not really liking it yet. Angled kind of, co uh, what do you call it, scale things there. I'm going to bring his... I'm going to bring his cheekbone out here. They imagine just like a human being or an animal. They have a, there's a cheekbone into the skull under there. So I'm going to bring that around there and get rid of that eye because it's driving me nuts. There we go. And then I'm going to start building down some stuff down here. And I'm thinking much more harsh and angular this time. So I'm going to cut a lot of these circles out, soften them. But I'm still trying to maintain the idea that they're still based on that circular three-dimensional object. So I'm going to carve out the eye socket on this side, curve it in, so that I end up with the cheekbone kind of coming out. And then I can create that growly sense here by imagining like if you do this with your nose you create a line down the middle and all of these things come around kind of emanate from the nostrils so if I imagine his nostrils are here and I flared out they're going to create repercussions all the way up the face Now, some people draw dragons that are very, like, uh, what do you call it, hard-edged and sharp-looking. I like to draw dragons that are almost have a human sense to them. Because the, very often in stories, dragons are are personified as, as, uh, as characters as opposed to just monsters. So I like to think of them as they've got personalities. So, like, a smog or a... I don't even know what other dragon puff. No, um, another dragon. Uh, other dragons frequently have personality. So, what I do now is I start to refine what I was doing with those basic shapes. So I'm getting back to creating these. Going back to like you know the nostril shapes. Think about it like a little cave. Have the upper part over. And then we draw under and underneath. Let me bring it down. And then if I'm doing this with my mouth, 
that has to happen is my lips pull back from my teeth. So, if dragons are anything like me, this is going to go like so around here and then come up like this. I always find it fun to kind of base all your drawings on, on you know, anatomy of humans because we can create the sense of personality that people have in fake and inanimate creatures. So as I go, I can erase out those soft lines I drew before and put some more detailed lines in. So now just as this is going up here, this has to go down. So... Can you say something about why you just did that thing with your mouth? Like this? Yeah. Oh, just because I was trying to figure out if this goes around like this, this has to go under like that. Everything in, in drawing tends to have an up and uh, an over under kind of a sensibility. So if I'm going over like this, it's got to go under like that. Uh, just basically, I, so I'm trying to get a sense of what the the shapes that I'm going for are going to do. I'm not liking that eye. I'm just going to do that for now. I'll get back to it. And you always make faces when you draw? Yeah, I always make funny faces when I draw. Um, so I'm going to throw some teeth down here. I'm just basically going to rough them in right now because I'm not worried about where they exactly are. And I'm going to draw a tongue, basically just like a slithery tongue in here. And I have to imagine always that there's a third there's another side to everything so if there's a side over here there's the other side so like the edge of his mouth is here there has to be the other edge of his mouth over there so have that and now since it's inside the mouth it gets a nice big shadow and then we'll go and we're just going to draw triangles for teeth you can get more elaborate with it if you like, but right now we're just going to start with triangles. And what I want to do is that as this lip is curling up, just like if Elvis was doing his lip curl, we're going to see some more gum. So in a way you want these teeth to kind of run along the same line. So they should all come down to about the same depth or at least feel like they're on the same level. And so as I go around, I think I'm going to have them tearing teeth. They'll point back a little bit. We'll see more of the gum. And that's really how you get that effect that the dragon is doing this with his face, is, is seeing more of the gum and kind of lifting that lip up. And then down here, we're going to do the same in reverse. We're going to lip, pull the lip down. So that we can see the gum down here. How's it going over there, Jacob? It's going well. Good. You having fun with your drawing? Hey, that's yeah. looking pretty good. Thanks. That's looking really good. So now I'm going to basically put some triangles down here. I like dragons with beards. <laughs> There we go. There's an eye for us. So I'm going to move the eye up a little bit. Still going with that same idea of the flap on top and under. And then we're going to bring the eye in. There we go. And I want to do draw the inside of the socket. And inside the socket, right in here, it tends to get pretty dark. So I'm going to allow that to get dark. And then eventually, at some point in this drawing, I'm going to start considering where the light is coming from. And that's really going to start changing the drawing, too. So once I get the structure of the drawing in, is that looking OK? Yeah, that's been pretty good. Maybe I throw some spikes down here just to make them feel a little bit more dragony and scary. 
Maybe his nose can be a little smaller. Why am I making these decisions? It's just more along the lines of personal choice, what, what I want to accentuate and what I don't. I don't want this dragon to be all about nose, so, <laughs> so I'm going to change that a little bit. And so over here, basically I created an idea where this is the inside of the socket, and we have the upper lid of the eye, the eyeball, and then the lower lid of the eye down here, just to create the look of us seeing it from the side. So now, let's see. And as we go, I'm going to start to put form to these horns a little bit. And now I'm going to start thinking about what, how I'm going to decorate this guy. So what's the, where are the scales going to go? And frequently what I do what I'm drawing is I keep the scales to the areas where the shadows are. So basically, you'll see more detail. If there's a highlight on an object, you'll see less detail. And as you get away from that highlight, you'll start to see the detail. And then the mid area between the highlight and where it starts to get dark, that's where you start to see the edge of the detail. So if I was going to draw a dragon's scales, I would think about it, the highlights hitting here, the further I get away from the light source, I get more detail on the scales, and then eventually it just goes to dark. So thinking about that on here, if I imagine where my light's coming from, I have to figure out where I'm going to put the scales from there. But I'm not there yet. So next thing I'm going to do is going to throw some jaggedy lines here, just to give myself an impression of where the where the scales are going to come up you know, like godzilla scales and i'm going to draw around now everything you have to draw is remember it's around the surface so if you're going to draw scales you have to follow the form the surface form of the object so if the object's coming towards you they have to follow around it that way so as i bring this paw here, I want to, I guess it's a paw, what do they call them, paws, claws, talons, so I bring it up to here, I want to have it angled so that we're looking down at it, so all of the scales will be moving away from us, like that. As the scales move away from us this direction, they're going to be going this way. What's going on? Are there any questions? Oh, any questions? Let's check. Oh, yeah. I was just asking. I still want to move that eye around. There we go. That's better. No questions? No. Nope. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, just ask, guys. I'm here <laughs> to answer anything if I can. I cannot answer how long the coronavirus will be out there, but I can answer how I draw a dragon. So now, I'm gonna bring some character in here. So what that is, is I'm creating this curve here for the eyebrows to make it look really angry. And so it goes under, like the brow kind of hangs down over the eye socket a little bit. So we're going to create this nice deep shadow in there and kind of, I don't know why my dragon's angry, because he's just a dragon. Maybe he's just mad about something, I don't know. I think his tongue should be maybe a little spindlier, maybe curl up, come to a point. So I'll get the tongue to go that, do that. And I'll put some shadow inside the mouth around the tongue. And then I have to decide, well, let's see. If the light source is coming from below, 
maybe that's where I should come from. So if that's the case, then everything goes away from the light source. So if the light is coming from this direction, the light is coming from this direction, the highlight's there, and then we start seeing the shadows going away. So I was going to have a darker pencil here, and I thought I did. Now I'm going to switch over to colored pencil. I'm going to start talking about how to make it feel more three-dimensional. I think I'm not going to end up getting to the, the foot here <laughs> um, today. Maybe I will. We'll see. Um, but so if I want to create lighting, the idea is light's coming from below. So anything that faces away from the light source is going to be shadowed. So any surface that points away. So if the lights, I'm going to make a, I'm going to put a little light source here. So I remember a little cone in red. And then... I'm going to go in and we'll say, okay, so and I always have to keep in mind that I'm still moving around the objects. I don't just flatten things out. So I did not do the Bob Ross thing and have a painting done ahead of time. So what you're seeing right now is live drawing. So as I go, you're going to see whether I sink or swim on the drawing. And so since this is up away from the light source, I'm going to shade away. And instead of doing like lots of modeling like this kind of stuff, I'm going to try and shade it into shapes that define the areas. So this shape is going to define kind of this nostril here and that nostril there. And then as I go back, I'm going to continue on with these shapes, just hinting at the idea that there's light catching on the shape. But actually, that this flat plane here is away from the light. So all of this probably should go to black. Making sense to you, Jacob? Yep. Oh, good. Yeah, that's looking good. Got some skills, kid. So, as I move away from that light source, I keep shading away from it. I'm always thinking that the shadows are pointing toward. The light source in a way, in a way that the rendering will point at the light source. Now here we get into a tricky area around the eye. I don't want the eye to glow. Oh, and this pencil is resisting. So let me switch to a, I'll well, switch to a marker, I guess, because uh, my pencil is not going to draw on the surface. This is what happens when you don't know what your materials are going to do until you do it. So I'm going to turn this into a little bit more of a ink drawing, but same rules apply. Essentially, as I go, I'm treating the areas. Let me get a bigger one here. So at least this good pointy one. So basically, I'm going to treat these areas. Like if it's on the top of the surface, it's going to be away from the light source. If it's away from the light source, it gets more of a big shadow on it. If it's in inside thing, it's inside the eye socket like this, it should pretty much go as dark as I can get it. Because no light can get in there. So I'm going to imagine that this socket facing away from the light source have a nice big shadow on it here and all of these ridges of anger on this dragon will also have a deep shaded area to them <clears throat> 
So like up here on the eye, the upper, the inside of the eye brow will have light. So in here, it'll be lit. But up here, it'll be in shadow. Whereas a normal light source, when we normally have light, which is above, all of this would be, all of this stuff on the top would be in light. Since we're going with a, a, a below shadow, or I mean light from a light source from below, we're going to do the opposite of that. So I'm always thinking about those basic shapes and how I'm drawing around them and keeping myself honest by making sure that anything, any plane that faces the light source is going to have light on it. And if something's blocking it from the light source and it gets shadowed, it's casting a shadow on it. Even when it comes to the teeth down here. Hey, can you check the time for me? Thanks, Jacob. Currently 3.42. Okay, wow. We only have a few more minutes. So I'm going to try and knock through this. Same kind of ideas, but we'll see what we can do here, folks. So... I'm going to try and do the scales up here and treat them as individual shapes. But I'm still going to consider the fact that they're all in the world of the shadows. So if it's in the world of the shadows, it stays dark. <laughs> I'm just going to plot every marker I've got, folks. Thank you for helping me out with this, Jacob. You're welcome. If I'm not as anim animated this time, it's because the first time I can be a little bit more silly. I'm less worried about making it an impressive drawing. <laughs> this time I'm a little bit more concerned about that, if only because you guys are older and I think you're going to want more information than the younger group. So all this stuff up here, I'm going to let go to black, but I'm going to leave some areas in there just so that you get the sense of three-dimensional form. If I let it go to flat black, it would just kind of flatten out. But because I'm going to go with breaking the black up, giving some sense that there might be some light caught on some of these little objects in here, I can I think next time I have to look at my timing a little bit better, huh? Well, this is the first time we're doing it, and it's a good experiment. Well, how's this? I'm going to keep working on this for a bit. Uh, I'll stay here. If you guys want to sit and watch me draw it, you can. If you want to go do something else, you can. If you have any more questions, please ask. My, my son is now free to do whatever the heck he wants, but let's see what he did. Can we see your drawing? Yeah, that's been pretty darn good, Jacob. It's pretty good. Looks like we drew the same thing. <laughs> that's awesome, Jacob. Thank you. So don't shut that off. So um, someone asked you, Oh, okay. What type of paper or board are you drawing on? Well, this right here is, believe it or not, I got a, a big box from someone of, uh, of inkjet paper that doesn't work with any printer that I've used. So I'm using that, which is not... Greatest drawing paper, which is why I was having that resistance with the pencil. Um, I've, I've only tested it out a few times, and but I have a, a supply of it, so I figured it was a good step to do something big. If I was normally going to work on something, I'd probably use illustration paper, um, but then I probably I would never be using sharpies on it. And then there is another question that is asking: Are you going to do? Are you going to paint later on? Uh, I could. 
Um, that'll be a lot longer process than just an hour. Uh, but I could, we could talk about, I mean, I'm open to suggestions. Um, maybe we do it like, you know, I just work on the same piece an hour a day and we can move forward from there. And we'll just, you know, I won't touch it. Although it's going to be really hard. I'm, I, I would want to draw on it all day. So <laughs> once I start a painting, it's addictive. I can't, I can't stop. So the, uh, I could, I could try it. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Well, I'm totally open to suggestions and, and ideas because this is, like I said, my first time ever doing this. I do lectures at schools um, and, and universities, and I've done some demos at conventions, but I've never done this on a video podcast. So I'm not sure how this works or looks or whatever. So if you have any opinions on that and you have any thoughts on how, how I can improve it, I'm totally open because I'm doing this doing this for fun, but I'm also doing this to figure out how I've, I've always kind of dreamed a little bit of, of being a little bit like Bob Ross. So, <laughs> um, but I'd like to be a, maybe the Bob Ross of monsters. So, uh, you know, any, anything I can do to improve or to help your experience and teach you guys is, uh, is great for me because, um, like I said, I, I, I love to teach. It's one of my favorite things in the world to do other than just make art. So, uh, you know, anything you, any, any information you have will really help. So I'm just going to keep drawing. No. And I gotta figure out if I can record these or not on Facebook. Hi. Hi, you're looking great. Yeah, good. It's hard to tell. <laughs> I feel like I've been squinting for an hour trying to see if I can see what's going on. But basically, um, I'm treating it like all the lights coming from below. And so the, the sense of the piece should be like that. At this point, I kind of want to jump in with some like, like a big brush so I don't have to scribble all these inks in <laughs> and just get kind of like right into just going on the next level with it. What do you think about that? Should I just keep going? You know what? Um, do do your 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 way of doing it. Okay. So if it's brush time, it's brush time. Yeah, it might it might just be. Well, I mean, I was thinking like like pulling out some acrylic and just kind of going. Oh, you know what would be really cool too? What is um? Take a minute to show the difference here. Oh yeah yeah. <laughs> so this is what I did with the kids earlier, and that's what we're doing here. It's a little <laughs> different, I think. Um. Hopefully the kids will get something out of that, and you guys can get something out of this differently. I shouldn't say the kids, because you you know you guys might be kids too. I don't know, for all I know. But yeah, I just mentioned my intent, my 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 uh, my love of the idea of becoming the Bob Ross of monsters. <laughs> Ooh, this is sticky pen. Ooh, this is not good. It's sticking in my hand. There must be something wrong with the ink in this. Yeah, that's or the good. paper. Maybe, yeah, the ink and the paper. Sometimes you'll find that materials do not like each other very well. <laughs> this is a Copic black marker. Was that someone leaving or coming? Or uh, Two more people joining. Oh, okay, cool. So just to give you guys an idea, I'm, I'm kind of at the end of things, but I'm going to keep going for a while because I'm enjoying this. And uh, so if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask. If anyone has any questions... Right now, I'm just kind of taking my pencil drawing and kind of hopping into ink because it's the first time I've used this paper to really draw on, and the paper was resisting my pencil. So I had to kind of switch gears and make something out of nothing there. At this point in the drawing, 
I'm kind of blocking stuff in in a big way and then I could probably start going in at a certain point by I'm starting to get loose and almost painterly with this black marker um, which is kind of fun but it could make the whole piece kind of fall apart if I don't watch it so maybe I'll switch to a gray marker and we'll see how that works I have a gray marker I should so yeah, here we go. So switch to a gray marker. This is a Copic, if you're wondering. And now that's kind of bleeding the paper paper a little bit. It's kind of interesting though. If I can control it. Frequently one of the things I like about art is not necessarily knowing whether you can control the elements that you're dealing with. Sometimes the materials have different ideas about how they want to be used and how you feel like you want to use them. Um, and especially like sometimes it's just an experiment and it's just like, wow, well, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to see. Um, I find that to be utterly exciting because, you know, if it was always the same every time you knew exactly what you were doing every single time, it'd be less joy and discovery. And I really like to discover things as I go. So that's why I'm, kind of really enjoy using different materials, as many different materials as I can get my hands on. And I enjoy doing, uh, I enjoy teaching because I always learn something when I teach. So that's kind of a neat little experiment there. Because while this brush, this marker is kind of dull and <laughs> I'm getting a point, I'm kind of getting a cool grayness out of this that I didn't expect. And so maybe when I go through, I can start to imagine painting in here a little bit more. Delineating out these teeth a little. Separating things out a little bit more. Oops. So what I can do here is it's going to look like a mess for a bit. There's always a point, I feel like, in every piece of art that I do where I'm like, oh, God, I ruined it. And I'm always like, well, what am I going to do now? And then I have to save it. So right now, it kind of looks like a mess. This is one of those things that, that, uh, that, that can stop people. People start to go, oh, I can't work past that mess period. So, but... If you can get past that mess period and find a material that's going to do what you want it to do, you can start to get around these problems. Let's see if I can get around this problem. Sometimes you can. Um, let's see if this is going to work on this paper. No, it's not. Okay. This is called picking it up as you go. I have, I'm going to grab some white. Maybe not. Let's grab... This. Well, that's purple. That's not the color I wanted it to be. Sorry, I'm going to be off screen for just a sec looking for another material to kind of recover here. Do -do -do. We should have, I need some, uh, what do you call it, music? I don't want brown. I just want gray. Back in one sec. This is the sound of me going through all my drawers looking for a marker, a particular marker. Here we go. Okay, so the next step I'm going to go through is I'm going to kind of fill this in with a bit of lighter color. And my reasoning for that is what I want to do is create a... There we go. I'm going to create a mid-tone. 
in my black areas or in, in the in between areas between the blacks and the whites and by doing that I can kind of pull together the piece a little bit more I can start to do things like ah, these lids do not want to go on the way I thought they should go on I don't know how to do this or use these before So by putting this gray in, I'm separating the values between light and dark, or I'm more actually, I'm getting rid of the, I'm getting rid of the white. That's really the important part. The more I can get rid of the white, the more I can use the white as a highlight. So the more the white disappears, the more the white becomes something special. And if I really want this piece to shine, I'm going to have to control my white. Now, to some degree, I'm going to have to go back in with white paint on this a bit because I've already destroyed a lot of the white surface on this a little too far. But that's called recovering your piece. Sometimes you have to do that. I mean, it's never fun. But sometimes you got to kind of go back and, especially when it's a loose sketch like this, go back and kind of figure out what you were doing, where you were doing it wrong, and kind of bring it back from the brink of, of doom. Well, now, here's where the fun start gets. Fun stuff happens. Sorry, this is going to take a second before I can
So if you're wondering, this is pro white that I'm using. It's a white inking uh, paint. It comes pretty opa opaque. It's kind of like using gouache, but a little bit more opaque maybe. And I'm painting back in basically areas that are facing the light source. So I was talking about the light source before. These are the areas that I'm kind of hitting up. Hello? No, it's just wind.
Andrew, what is my favorite monster? I don't know if you're still on here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> probably right now. Um, favorite monster. I like vampires a lot. <laughs> uh, actually, werewolves probably. I love the the conflict between the person and themselves that the werewolf kind of represents. It's like the the battle between you and your dark self. Um, you know, and it's interesting because werewolves have always been kind of a, you know, representation of things like cannibalism and stuff like that. But, you know, there's also other stories where they're almost, uh, almost indistinguishable from vampires. So it's kind of an interesting, they have an interesting background. They're, they're, depending on what culture you're from, they're very different. I think I'm about to wrap up, guys. So, going in with some black paint to kind of finish this off. Because this became more of a painting than a drawing. Um, <laughs> and what I can do with the blacks now is I'm going to bring more clarity to the piece. Maybe more accurately became more of an ink drawing than a drawing. What's time to go? Uh, pretty soon. We have a, a workout starting in a little bit. Okay. No, I mean, it's time to go, right? Yeah. And also right now, because you're standing like you're standing, um, it's really focusing on your arm hair and not the painting. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So <laughs> that's as good as I can get in this session. Um, I guess I can give it a better view from over here. Um, at this point, this is something that's now going to be a couple hours before I'm done with it. <laughs> but, uh, I hope you can see where we started and how we got here, and uh, hopefully that was fun for everyone <laughs> watching me try to recover as I went. All right. Have a good day, and uh, I'm going to try and do this again tomorrow, so I'll see you then. Bye-bye.